After Coventry University, I, uh, I was taken under the wing of Peter Stevens at Lotus and given an opportunity to experience life in a proper design studio at Lotus and I had the awesome opportunity to work with uh, Peter and Julian Thompson and Simon Cox who were all at Lotus at that point and learnt a supreme amount from them um, but also learnt that I, I was pretty sure that I didn't want to be a car designer at that point in my life. Rock and roll had certainly um, piqued my interest at that point and I, and I really wanted to explore being a songwriter and being in a band and that's what I did. When we first take, came to America the, re the record company had laid on a limousine and the guy, the, the driver was waiting at the airport with a, a Miss C wheel. He said, where's the girl? I said, there's no girl. <laughs> there's no Catherine, it's the name of a band. I knew we had problems in America as soon as, as, soon as that happened, but uh, it was all right. Ultimately, I moved to Los Angeles in 2005 um, and built my own ultimate 9-11, or what I thought was my own ultimate 9-11. Um, and that was my daily driver in Hollywood while I was making a record here in, uh, in Hollywood in 2003-2004. And that, co that car got quite a lot of attention in magazines and from producers and directors and film stars and rock musicians who stopped me in Hollywood and asked me to, if they could buy my car. And uh, I finally stopped saying no and I started saying, well, I could build you one if you want. Not, being, not really having the sense that I had the ability to build one, but telling them that, it would, that I could if they really wanted one. And that, the germ of that idea um, led to this. Um, and the car that I built back then has very much inspired the car, the, the way that we restore these cars now. We spent two years working on this surface here Actually, right there, when this, where this company started in 2008, I, st I had the, we started doing the clay work right there, and, and it took ages. It took, uh, we basically put the wheel and tire package on that we knew we needed, which was 17-inch wheels. Making 17-inch wheels look like they belong on an early 911 is very hard um, because the car sits too high. So there was a lot of intellectualizing for want of a better word, the, what needed to be done to the, pro, to the profile of the car for it to sit comfortably on 17-inch wheels, which required some trickery here, and some, not trickery, but some, some strategies in these areas of surfacing and these areas of making the, 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 the body ratio work with the wheel ratio, and also making the car sit properly on the road and have the right stance. And the idea is that it took, it might have taken ages, but the idea is it has to look effortless and it has to look utterly authentic. It has to be utterly Porsche. Most people say, did you use turbo flares or did you do RSR flares? And that's a compliment because it looks, it, it's not meant to look like a custom car. Everything on this car is meant to be Porsche and it is Porsche. Um, it's just that we needed to adjust a few things to satisfy the performance of the car. And we did that in a reverential, celebratory, kind of uh, auth hopefully authentic way, which was sincere to the original 911 and sincere to the original Bo Bootsy Porsche design. We went to a huge effort to get the look and the feel and the atmosphere of the car right at a, at a very early stage. We went, it was crazy. We, we, we spent a huge amount of money and we spent a huge amount of time, huge amount of stress, huge, huge amount of of uh, self-anguish, it wasn't easy. Uh, we, changed, we added a little bit of radius here. This is basically an early 911 bumper, but with, a, with some slight modifications to, we put, it a bit, we put a bit more blood in here just to, just to give it a little bit more bosom in certain areas. Um, but we, it's meant to feel utterly like it belongs. And that's, that, was the, that was the idea with the, with the body work. We're lucky enough to have attracted a number of people and I think can see now after a, a few years of doing this that we can execute these, these restorations, you know, efficiently. And uh, we're learning to do that better and better each day. Um, as you can see here, we're, we're trying to put a, uh, a, 
a structure in place where we can build these cars beautifully and sensibly. The, the idea was always an attractive one to people back in 2009 that you've got something that, that uh, on, the, on the face of it looks vintage but isn't. I'm not interested in nostalgia. This isn't an exercise in retroism for me. This is an exercise in op optimization. My idea was that uh, within that fabulous 40-year-ish period of the air called 9-11, um, there was an ultimate set of ingredients. So we take, you know, we took what we think is the, the finest there called 911, which is the 964, and we repatriated that chassis with the earlier original Porsche, Bootsy Porsche bodywork. And we tried to go around the whole car with that sense of how can we make this car leaner, fitter, uh, faster, lighter but also retain that immensely important duality that a 911 must have, where it can be a race car at the weekend and you can drive it to work on Monday. The, in the interiors of the car needed to be as, 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 as considered as the exterior, and, and part of the atmosphere of the car and part of the, the aura around the car is that it's an extravagance. We understand that this is optimization or restoration or modification taken to the nth degree to, uh, you know, we. It was like, how do we make the engine as good as possible? How do we make the gearbox as good as possible? How do we make the brakes as good as possible? It's like, money isn't an object. There was a sense that the interior would not, all, not just be a sumptuous place to be, but there would be some extravagance in the interior as well in terms of, but in a way that, some people have called this a, the Couture 911, and I kind of like that, but I also like the fact that we, as much as stressing about the, 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 the fabric or the, uh, the softness of the leather that goes into the car, we also stress about the weight of the conrods in the, in, in the engine. There's not many companies have that neurosis across that wider range of what goes in the car. So for me, I'm a, you know, I'm a designer, I'm not an engineer. We've managed to attract some really good engineers to, to, to this project to, to take care of the things that I don't necessarily understand. But when it comes to the interior, uh, for me it was, it was again honoring Porsche tradition. Um, in the 60s and early 70s Porsche interiors had embossed vinyl basket weave interiors. And I thought, well, why don't, if we wanted to update that and bring that into the 21st century in a lavish but respectful way, why don't we just w w use woven, proper woven leather? So we did. There's a company in, Spinney, a company in New York called Spinnybeck Leather that produces our leather um, that are able to do this for us. Um, it's an option. Um, it's not, all, not all our cars ha have, have, have this finish, but it's a popular one. It gives, the, it gives a wonderful textural feel to the interior of the car, uh, especially when uh, juxtaposition with rather subtle muted colors which we love there's some colors here that you, you can see kind of dull greens and, and grays the, the nickel just sparkles with it's incredibly jewelry like but it's not shouty and it's uh, the, 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 the nickel the, we worked with a company here on the nickel plating which um, has the luster of uh, anodized aluminum but the color of nickel it took a long time to develop that finish, um, but it gives, gives an effortless, almost, it, it, this, it brings a sense of vintage chic to the car without it looking overtly um, laboured. Um, and that is included in the interior as well. So the interior has this benefits of this wonderful warm nickel colour with this textural leather and, um, and all the other things that we've done on the interior as well. We do a lot of uh, sub-assembly fabrication here, and we assemble the cars here, and we disassemble the 964 that we start with here. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the first three months of the process happens with, uh, with our valued uh, partners outside of the shop. We have um, uh, an incredible fabrication um, uh, company over the road. A guy called TJ Russell is head, head, uh, heads the charge on all the fabrication of the chassis before they go to the Aria Group in, in Irvine, who are composite um, specialists and prototyping specialists and engineering company, who spend most of their time building concept cars for the, for the big manufacturers. So they do all our 
Uh, they have all our tooling and they create the carbon fiber panels, apply them, bodywork them and paint, do the paint work on the cars. And then the cars are delivered back here um, for assembly. We have about 140 companies that contribute um, services and parts and important things to the car. So dovetailing that all together is, uh, is, a, is a challenge. We work within a, a framework, a broad framework of, of uh, options that we can offer to, to allow the customer to make the car their own. Um, and that's a lot of, there's about 40 or 50 options that the, that the, in terms of engine displacement and power, gearboxes, suspension, interior, lots of things that the, the customer can choose from to, to, to make the car fit him or her as, a, as an individual. Singer is timeless, it's not look at me, it's not full of unnecessary embellishment, it's performance, it's function, it's beauty. Uh, Ferdinand Porsche said, beauty comes from functionality. And there's never a more functional, purposeful piece of product design than a Porsche 911. It betrays its underpinnings transparently. It doesn't hide them. It's the most functional, everyday, enduring supercar the world has ever seen. Porsche are geniuses for creating it. They're geniuses for maintaining it and, and continuing to develop it. And um, we're just trying to bottle it. We're just trying to capture that essence and bottle it for, for, for generations that didn't get to experience uh, 9-11 in 1964.